just I can say one thing about this guy, okay? <laughs> he's he's upset. Uh, okay, so anyway. Actually, this guy, um, I never imagined he was a pastor. That's the first Presbyterian pastor in Egypt in 1854. It's the first. Imagine that. That's exactly like how the sheikhs are addressed right now in Al-Azhar. But that was the formal way to be addressed in this time. And with no sensitive thing about the way they were addressed. But um, So anyway, that's, I thought that's a cool picture to see. Um, here, that's my own city. That's not the city I was talking about. And that's my Presbyterian church. Um, and it's my family are sitting in front of our house. Okay, See how streets are very small. That's a street, actually. Okay, and um, this church also was very, very old church, and my former pastor spent almost 10 years to get the permission. But uh, once you get it, it's like everything is gone, because it's a big dream. It's even behind the dream. So you work a lot, and um, you imagine someday will happen. So my congregation, um, that's my congregation here. That's my neighbor. Okay? Anybody can know what that is? The green stone there? Alpha Alpha. Yeah. And that's two of my kids in a Sunday school. And that's their father, and that's a donkey. Actually, the church on the other side, but just uh, give you uh, a glance about uh, who they are, my people in the congregation. And uh, yeah, you can start from here. All of these from my congregation. That's in the process. You see, the, uh, the construction is uh, it's not finished yet. Um, this doors, iron door, and bent here, um, and uh, some of my elders and um, the Sunday school people from the outside. Everybody was happy. That's a church. Maybe that's the best one to see. And we really did everything very fast because the problem, the trick thing, even if you have a permission, any higher officer can say, for the homeland security, you have to stop. We feel something is going wrong, and you stop. So you're really working 20, literally 24 hours because you don't know when this happened. So all this thing happened in a very, very few days. Everybody, and most of the workers are volunteer. Most of the workers, only a few people were hired. Everybody in the community, Catholic, even some Muslim, uh, they, they really participated in the project. Yeah, that's the that church was, I think that's, that's the last stage. Uh, this, that's only like maybe 20% of our Sunday school kids in the street. <laughs> so um, I, was, I was blessed to be with them. And, uh, and here is that daily life, these two kids, and uh, go in the street. And, uh, yeah, that's the last, I want to show this last picture, okay? And I think that's what I'm going to stop now for this presentation. The last one, yeah? Can you make it bigger? Uh, because we didn't have time, I was planning to make it a good question for you. And uh, ask you what you think about this picture. But I'm going to tell you, um, every time I use it in the West, or with the Western people in Egypt, and I tell, me, I tell them, what do you think about these people? Who they are? We consider people, these are like in my grandmother age, first. The way they are dressed, it's unbelievable. People would think they are veiled. I said, actually, they are the most two active ladies in my congregation. In these days, nobody called this dress as a Christian or a Muslim dress. We don't know where it came from. But that was the reality. I mean, nobody think about a dress will show who you are, what's your religion. And then in the new age, people take others of these things off, but they still cover their head. 
like my mom's age now. She's still covering her head, but she will not be covered that much. And the dress will be the same design, but it's more colorful. So that's, that's the progress. And now, in the last five years, a new phenomenon in Egypt is fight between Muslim secular and Muslim who lean toward Muslim Brotherhood about every Muslim lady needs to be veiled, or even burqa. Burqa is the, the extreme, like, really, you barely have only your eyes out. So it's just kind of like something, I'm not saying positive or negative things, but at least when we see the progress in our communities, as smart people or creative people, is helping us to think about where this came from. Egypt was a Muslim country for more than 15 years, but we weren't dressed like that in the, in the South, which in the South still hold a lot of the ancient tradition, which you can't call it Christians or Muslim. It's just tradition. It just when the Muslim lady will be out standing with my mom, the way they dressed, you can't tell. So thank you, I know, I, I really like to hear your, uh, your question. Or whatever, 
the people in the street, this young generation, will not keep them in power. If anybody can shake the seat of Mubarak, which is, I was thinking about Mubarak is not going to die. Yeah. That's really what I thought. Yeah. Mubarak, nobody can move Mubarak from his seat. Actually, all my life under Mubarak regime, like a few only years, yeah. but all my life under Mubarak regime. So it's like for granted, you wake up every day, you say the sun, sunset and sunshine, it's like the same thing with Mubarak. It's like, it's not going to be changed. So what happened in a few days, it's unbelievable. This guy is smart enough, is strong enough, he's brutal enough to know where is the trouble coming from and keep them down. What happened in the last few days was out of the expectation of the whole world. Nobody believes just this group, these kids, who are uh, AUC kids, uh, the American University of Cairo, uh, middle class people, maybe socially and economically they have uh, not bad opportunity. They will uh, do this thing, just say in the Facebook, what well, you say enough. Yeah. And then they find other people saying laugh, and they figure out they didn't care if you are Christian or Muslim. They didn't care if you are Muslim brother or who you are. That's not the problem. And I heard a story from a close friend who was living in Cairo. He told me during the, the prayer of the dawn, you know Muslim pray five times. Yeah. Prayer of the dawn is the last prayer you have to catch before the sun child. So they said that there was the wonderful scene. The Muslims start to pray and knee down in the Tahrir Square. And when they finished the prayer, they found a, a Christian bringing them food and waters and providing them everything. That was the re that's the powerful. That's the idea of really, I don't care about your religion, I care about you have the same vision to reform this country. So I have the concern about Muslim Brotherhood uh, because they won't show their faith. And I don't know what real faith they have. Uh, but at the same time, I am, I am really uh, hopeful these people, they start to believe what the Americans believe when they say we the people. That's what, that's the, for the first time in our history, we're still controlled by the Pharaoh, okay? Same way, we worship the Pharaoh, we scare the Pharaoh. Police cars is not for protection, it's for fear. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that when I saw these young people standing and they are not scared from the police facing them face to face. In Egypt, when you see a police car, you run for your life. You don't wait. That's not the White House of the United States. That's the reality. That's the unfortunate reality. So I was, all these things were like, I don't know where this came from. I don't know how this happened. I don't know what I'm saying is even real or not. I just, yeah, but uh, I, I have concern too. Um, that's what people is, is asking for now, but some people say it's too much, so try to, to focus on one thing, like kick this uh, dictatorship, kick him out first, that's the biggest thing, and then um, just wait for, for the next thing. Yeah. You deal with the big thing and like say, this one is not really fit with that, we are going to be a secular society. So, yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate that and keep them in your prayer.